What's up guys, Josh Loud here with the Card Guys, and today we're going to be running through my Hatchet Storinthia list that I used to top 8 the recent Pro Tour Los Angeles competition. Uh, as you can tell, I am not at home. Uh, I am in Hong Kong, actually. I guess I am home. I am at my other home. Uh... Background's a little bit different. I sound a little bit different, but it's still your boy, Josh Lau. Uh, so, Hatches Dorinthia, breakout deck of the tournament. Uh, quite Surprisingly, quite a few people were on it. Um, shout out to the Runaways team. They were very, very helpful in chit-chatting about the uh, the deck, especially uh, before right before the quarterfinals. Uh, but yeah, the deck is very, very powerful. It does powerful things. It has powerful numbers. There's actually a lot of ways to outplay your opponent. It's not just herder, pitch a blue, attack, blade runner, attack, reset dynamos. There's a lot more nuance and uh, ability to outplay. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that you'll learn by playing the deck. Uh, by no means is this deck super complicated to play, but there are a lot of uh, lines that you can set up. And um, it rewards solid fundamentals. It also rewards planning ahead. Uh, this deck is a deck that actually utilizes pitch stacking as well. Uh, it may not in the future because, you know, uh, some of the cards that the uh, that are on the short list of being added is are actually Singing Steel Blade. Um, but today I just wanted to break down the deck. Um, and... I will make another video uh, talking about the cards that uh, I would be looking to uh, maybe include in the uh, in the deck going forward um, for the Calling Phuket as well as week one of Pro Quest Season 5. Um, I think the deck will dramatically change as well as the metagame will dramatically change once Ro uh, Dromai leaves. Um, she just needs to win two pro quests in week one which i think is pretty much a given that she's going to be able to do that um so week two three four and going forward uh the metagame will look quite different um and there are many many cards in my mind that i've been thinking about and uh yeah i'll break that down in another video uh but today we're just going to break down the 80 that i took uh for the tournament so let's jump into that right now all right, guys, I have the whole deck laid out here. I know there's a little bit of glare. I know the camera quality is not the greatest. Uh, I'm working with what I got, uh, so please uh, bear with me. Uh, okay, so we laid out, I, let, I tried to lay out the deck in the, in the logical manner. Um, this is the main 48 cards uh, that we play in every single matchup, and we got 22 cards in the sideboard, and obviously we'll be bringing in at least 12 of those. Uh, and we got 10 equipment pieces. Um, so let's uh, break down the deck. We have it sorted by pitch, but we also have it sorted by category. Um, so first of all, let's talk about uh, the go-again sources. Because there's a lot of go-again in this deck. And that's really what uh makes the deck churn so we have a few familiar faces we have a few uh newer cards uh but together you know that that's actually what makes the deck strong is that it's a co combination of you know the wtr cru everfest cards in addition to the heavy hitter cards together they are much stronger uh so speaking of old school cards we got nine copies of hit and run uh rainbow it is just the greatest card in this deck <laughs> one of the greatest cards in this deck um this is what allows you to get a triple swing off um when you have an agility token this is extremely threatening it could turn into just two cards if you have an agility token it'll be two into into six into three and reset dynamos and so that could be potentially a two card 12 with agility a single blue plus a single red hit and run is is ridiculous value um in matchups where you're bringing in the attack actions as well 
uh, hit and run leaves you uh, allows you to be a little bit more of uh, kind of like the old school, uh, the traditional Domblade Dory, in that maybe there's a weapon swing coming, maybe there's something else coming, like a command and conquer. Um, they don't really know. Uh, so yeah, hit and run, excellent card. Uh, red hit and run, notably, is a card that uh, needs to be set up a little bit to get max value. Like if you're if you're playing red hit and run as your initial go against source that's okay that's two into three reset dynamos is a two card six it's not bad but we this card uh, is significantly better once we set it up with some agility or we pair it with another go against source uh also this card gets much better when we have or the whole deck gets better when we have bigger tokens um just creates a more smooth curve creates more uncertainty um so yeah that's hit and run uh we have blade runner i believe this was from everfest uh it's been a the backbone of one-handed uh warrior decks for quite some time now uh the numbers are just excellent on this and as an attack reaction um there's, there's not really that much uncertainty <laughs> People know if you have a couple cards and some resources floating that obviously you have some source of go again. But the main thing is that they don't know if it's Blade Runner. They don't know if it's Shift the Tide of Battle. They don't know if it's Glint. Um, they don't know if it's going to be Singing Steel Blade. It could be... I actually think the deck changes quite a bit um, in the in the coming weeks. So uh, there's, a, there's many, many possibilities. And... Blade Runner is just the most likely possibility. So, uh, but yeah, it's kind of vanilla, but it is solid. And obviously, that's why we play all nine copies of those. Okay, so now let's talk about these kind of like specialized uh, Go Again cards. We got three copies of Spoils of War, two copies of Shit the Tide of Battle, and three copies of Glint. Um, Spoils of War, this is a card... It's, it's been part of the Warrior Arsenal for a very, very long time. Uh, of note, this is one of the better cards against Brute in general, because uh, if you're relying on uh, go again from your hand, uh, and it's at reaction speed, that leaves you very vulnerable to Scowling Fleshbag. So these attack reaction go agains in that matchup need to be in your arsenal. Whereas Spoils of War, whether it's an arsenal or in your hand, both unlock good turns. And of course, agility tokens in general unlock your turns. Um, so yeah, Spoils of War, Spoils of War, good card. Uh, the Copper, relevant in more matches than in Dawnblade Dory because the, the deck does tend to go to second cycle and the deck will run into... Uh, hands in the second cycle where you've just pitched four blues in a row. So the copper tokens actually can be quite relevant uh, at the very end of the game. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Shift the Tide of Battle. This is a card I'm probably going to try to find room for a third copy. This is a card that synergizes very well with cards like Blade Flurry, uh, In the Swing, uh, Lead with Speed, or just as your second uh, source of go again on your second axe swing. Um, and because it's a zero cost, it creates the, uh, it, it can enable a third hit. So this is this is actually one of the best cards to play uh, to get a third hit when you don't have an arsenal. Because if they block, you just arsenal it. If they don't block, you play shift the tide of battle on your second hatchet. You get the agility token, you get the go again, you get the third swing. It's just ma massive, massive, massive value. Uh, much better in the aggressive matchups than in the more passive matchups, but still a great, great, great card. Uh, also pairs well with Spill Blood as well. Um, this card is really, really, really solid, and I think I'll try to find room for a third copy. Uh, over here, we got Glint the Quicksilver, classic card. Uh, you, at first I was like, ah, who's going to be blocking hatchets? I'm never going to get reprise off Glint. Uh, it's not that great. Well, 
it turns out uh, a lot of decks are actually finding out they have to block hatchets or you just get ridiculous value. So you're getting reprise a lot more than you think you are. Um, obviously, the card draw is not amazing because you get a random getting a random card in Dory is not that strong generally, um, especially if you have a card in Arsenal already. But it does allow uh, allow you to just be a little get a little bit more value, especially if you if you can get reprise off all three of your glints, you're doing well. Um, but it just creates the ambiguity of is it Blade Runner, is it Shift, is it Glint, and it plays its role. Uh, it also has Helmet Story on it, and as we know, Helmet Story cards are very strong. Uh, all right, let's move down a little bit more. Uh, let, let's quickly talk about the uh, the Warrior's Valor here, and then we'll move on to the Agility Creation uh, cards. Uh, Blue Warrior's Valor, this is this is pretty much a flex slot. This can be switched into something else. Uh, a card that I've actually been thinking about a little bit more is um, Last Ditch Effort, uh, because the deck could go to that state. Uh, obviously, we that that's a little bit of a liability against uh, Codex decks, but um, and Kasai, but uh, that that this could become uh, that. Uh, this was basically there just to enable uh, the easy, uh, easily getting rid of a three or four health dragon, uh, just giving a few extra sources a go again. Uh, I never actually played Warriors Valor, like. And then went face. The, the, none of the situations lined up. It was it, this card basically is just for Drew by. Um, but it's a blue block three. It has potential go again. It has. Uh, but yeah, it is. It is a flex slot. Okay, let's talk about some of these new cards here because we got a bunch of uh, new cards from heavy hitters, and these are I, these are cards I think you're going to be seeing quite a few uh, copies of going forward. Let's talk about take it on the chin first. Take it on the chin is such a powerful card. When I read this card for the first time, I'm like, this is the card that like could get banned. Like it's that strong type of card. Um, it creates an agility token. It prevents two damage. Uh, it doesn't turn on reprise. It works against Kano. It allows you. It works against Reckless Swing. Uh, it's it's just so 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 strong, and you it only even though it only blocks for two with Dynamos, it's basically blocking for three. And agility tokens are just so 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 powerful uh, in this dual uh, dual wield warrior deck. Um, so obviously we're going to play all three copies of Take It on the Chin. Uh, down here we got two copies of Lead with Speed. This is this is a good card. It says plus three to your next warrior attack. Create an agility token. It costs one, blocks for two. It's it's a card that I think is just good enough in a two of type of situation. Um, the issue with this card is that it forces you to play the card out. And because it costs one and we don't have a tunic, even if we had tunic, it doesn't help. Um, this forces, whenever you draw lead with speed, you're forced to keep your hand or keep at least two cards, uh, which uh, as a Domblade Dory player, I never really wanted to be forced into lines, whereas lead with speed does force me into lines. But I think it, I think the payoff is powerful enough that I'm okay with uh, lead with speed forcing me down a certain path. Uh, and I think it's I think it's a solid card. This is a card that I'm going to be keeping a very very close eye on in terms of like is this performing well? So far it's performed pretty well, uh, but I will be keeping a close eye on this. Uh, next up, we got Blade Flurry. Uh, this has been the standout card of the set. This is this is a one of the most expensive majestics of the set for a reason. Uh, it is playable in every single variant of warrior and it's just really really strong giving it synergizes well with many many things in the deck it's also a kill condition it's also a zero for four uh it's a very reliable zero for four it's a zero for four block three it you really can't ask 
uh, for much more than that. And yeah, this is one of the ways that you can set up triple hits against defensive decks. Um, so basically, you would arsenal this, or you would uh, arsenal something like a hit and run, wait till you draw the pairing piece, and then you would go for it. Um, yep, yeah, very, very, very strong card. Okay, uh, let's move over here and talk about the two goblets. Uh, this is a card I'm thinking maybe should be a three of, because if we think about our turn zero high roll, we could set up lead with speed, we could set up goblet, we could set up uh, times that potion, uh, we could play warmongers against certain decks, uh, maybe we get in some uh, damage with our fatal engagements or overpower, but that's about it. We we aren't, or we could also high roll a little bit with spill blood. So the adding, you know, a third goblet here would improve our high roll. Uh, but currently the deck list has two. I think that's fine. This is a card you don't really want to draw in multiples. That's actually something that's important. Like if you if you look at the deck, like if you draw multiple leads with speed, that's not really the greatest thing. If you draw multiple shift the tide of battles, that's not the greatest thing. So um, in general, um, the card has to be r ridiculously powerful or core to the deck to, to get a three of. Um, and I, I think this 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 might qualify, but it's I'm somewhere between two and three. But anyways, this is a great card. It creates an agility, creates a vigor. If you have a vigor from the grains, uh, you could literally just block your whole hand out and then swing swing for z for nothing. Uh, you don't even need cards to, to 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 fight back with Dory. So that's a that's a really 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 strong, uh, especially paired with the grains of blood spell. Um, yeah, solid card. Okay, let's, um, we'll talk about, the, uh, we might as well talk about this right now, and we'll, we'll talk about the D, D reacts, and then we'll go down the line here on the blues. So, we've got a single copy of That's All You Got. This could be a two of, depending on the metagame. Uh, great against Kasai, great in the mirror, like, like, hatchet mirror. Also fine against Dawnblade as well. Um, it's good against Kasai, Dromai. Uh, hatchet warrior any saber user is also great uh good against Phi katsu um it's a good card uh getting a random card is not the greatest but uh yeah it's it's good enough i think uh this this could be zero to two uh, i landed on one in the end um as for other D reacts, we got a bunch in the sideboard, but in the main board, we also got three hold the lines here. Hold the line, if you watched my matches on camera, this got massive value against Leviah and against Ko. Um, it's just so powerful, especially um, if setting this into Arsenal is totally fine. Sometimes you just draw it on the hands where they want to play their Art of War, they want to play their Blood Rush Bellow, they sink below twice they or they go with like wild ride into bear fangs or what or they're doing the draw discard twice like very 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 powerful card in this current metagame great against dromai as well with tome uh and it's a it's a blue block two that blocks five sometimes i uh this this card's this card's been totally 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 fine and it's uh Giving extra d reacts also allows you to play the Decimator Great Axe to a greater effect because you have such a giant concentration of uh, d reacts as well. So three hold the line in this current metagame I think is really, 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 uh, really good. Okay, let's run down some of these blues here and then we'll talk about the sideboard. We got two copies of Fatal Engagement and a single copy of Overpower. These, uh, I mean... Dorinthia fans, you guys should know that uh, three overpower was one of the best blues uh, because late game you're flooded with blues, and this is one way to end the game. Fatal engagement is basically a better co better version of overpower against most of the metagame. That's why it's a two one split this way. Um, but you could go a one two split in the other direction, and you could even like change these out. Like the these. These uh could be could be different. Although these fatal engagements here did kill quite a few people, so uh, 
It's good cards, but you could change them if you want. Got two copies of Warmonger's Diplomacy here in the flex slot as well. Something you'll notice is that the blues have quite a bit of flex slots, right? Uh, it's, good. it's just a solid card in this metagame. Decent against Dromai, good against Azalea, good against, you know, Visrai. Uh, it's, it, it does its job. It's a blue block three. It, I never act, I didn't play this out in any of the matches because I, I didn't play against an Azalea. Uh, it's just a blue block three. Does its job. Uh, down here, we got the, uh, the infamous time stat potion here. Uh, this card used to be Heart of Fendel, but I needed deck slot space, so I cut Heart of Fendel and moved Time Snap from my sideboard into my main board. Uh, but this Time Snap potion basically protects you against the ALS loop that Prisms could execute. So to, to do that, you basically have to put the Time Snap potion down into the field fairly early, and then, you know, that way you can break out of the uh, ALS loop. Um, by hatcheting into the ALS and then having a sufficient bump uh, buff to kill the hero, uh, the Archangel of Rebirth. Uh, I played two Prisms, didn't run into that situation in either game, uh, but I do like having just some built-in protection. Also, it's it's extra sources of go again, and you know you play this on turn zero perfectly fine turn zero play so i think uh in the current metagame one time snap potion is quite good uh as a flex slot okay guys that was the main deck the main 48 cards for the deck uh let's take a look at the equipment and sideboard now all right guys here is the sideboard laid out for you guys so let's just jump into it let's talk about the equipment first then we'll talk about the sideboard so we have 10 pieces of equipment here uh we have for weapons we have hatchet of body hatchet of mind and we have the decimator great axe so in most matchups we'll be using the hatchets the decimator great axe is used against riptide arachne azuri you also can bring it in against guardians and you can bring it against warrior uh i think that's fine um, I think the hatchets give you a little bit more dynamic gameplay against them, but, uh, I think the decimator great X is also equally effective against them. Uh, so yeah, uh, as for the other equipment pieces, this is a fairly standard looking, uh, equipment suite. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say that actually, because, uh, there are two choices on the head piece and there's two choices for the chest piece so um let's let's talk about uh why i chose balance of justice over crown of providence uh and why i didn't include crown of providence i guess uh by extension uh balance of justice in this current metagame just like hold the line is extremely powerful uh drawing an extra card on their burst turn allows you to slow the game down it allows you to pivot as well um and it's just worth five value against a lot of decks in the format um Crown of Providence, the only reason you would want Crown of Providence is if you expect to come against a lot of CNC pummel decks. And current the, the currently, Bravo is not heavily represented in the current metagame. Um, so I don't think there's a, a real need for Crown of Providence. Obviously, Crown of Providence would be better in the mirror um, and against decks that don't draw a lot of cards. Uh, but I think... Uh, because of sideboard slots, especially because I'm running an extra weapon here. This is this is an extra sideboard slot. Uh, just the balance of justice is fine. Uh, Grains of Blood Spill. So this is really the difference between my deck and uh, Max's deck and uh, the Runaways deck. Uh, this card uh, basically is better against aggressive decks because you're good you have extra life as well as <clears throat> the ability to create a lot of vigor tokens against decks that don't want to block um and the issue with this is that it's weaker in the mirror as well as uh there's a little bit more uncertainty whereas you know the tunic just being around creates a lot of uh stability um i think 
uh, going forward, I'm still go I'm going to test out the tunic a bit more. Um, it could come down to just keeping grains, keeping just tunic, or developing a list that uses both. We'll see. Um, but as you can see in my sideboard, I don't have Oasis. I don't have Shunt. So there's re I don't really get that extra value from tunic. So that's why I leaned toward just having grains. Grains performed well uh, in basically the, the whole tournament. Um, obviously, it's not that great. It wasn't that great in the quarterfinals, but that's okay. All right, next up, we got Brave Forge Bracers. This is a card that is just a cla warrior classic. Uh, allows you to dump resources. Allows you to... Um, the grains plus the Brave Forge Bracers kind of create a situation where your opponent is heavily incentivized to block the first one. And that's something I noticed quite a bit. So uh, that's why I've been thinking more and more about reprise cards is because you get just so much value um, because people are really blocking the first one nowadays um, to deny you value from Bracers, deny you value from grains. Um, but yeah, you got extra resources, dump it into Bracers, dump it into grains. It's pretty good. Uh, Valiant Dynamo, obviously this card is one of the greatest cards uh, in the whole deck. Uh, this gen this basically counteracts the Phoenix Flame. This counteracts the Might Token generation from KO. Um, over the course of the game, this can easily block, uh, you know, 10 to 15 plus, uh, depending on the length of the game. Uh, prevents uh, breakpoints from being annoying. And it's just a very, very solid card. There are some matchups where you need to be very careful with how you block with this. Um, against uh, Ninja, for example, you need to be very cognizant that uh, this could get possibly uh, uh, banished. So you, you do need to be careful with this a little bit, but uh, it's still a very, very, very strong card. Down here, we got AB3. Uh, I chose to go with AB3, and I went with this AB3 setup uh, for for a particular reason. So I have the robe, uh, gloves, and boots. So that means against Kano, I would be running AB3 Balance of Justice. So originally I was playing uh, AB3 Grains. So I, I instead of the Null Rune Robe, I had the Null Rune Hood. Um, and I just, I played that matchup a couple times with AB3 Grains, and it was just like, I never wanted to uh, use the grains because that really opened me up to getting blown out so i was like well i might as well go ab3 balance of justice because well it's it just generally when kano tries to kill you uh it is on they they do draw cards so you know they got the tome of uh aether wind they got tome of fendel so they this is a this is a class that does draw cards so uh, I also, sh shout out to Joe Bay for uh, tell for telling me <laughs> uh, the AB3 balance is better. And yeah, uh, okay, uh, okay. Let's move on to the cards here. Uh, let's just start off here. Um, in terms of poppers, I went CNC Runner Runner. Um, Max went CNC Amnesia, which I think is fine. My deck is more aggressively slanted than his. Um, and I have a little bit more agility generation than him. So uh, that's why I went with Runner Runner. Uh, Command and Conquer is a great card. It allows ambiguity in your attack pattern. And uh, it's a popper. It's CNC. It's not rocket science, right? Uh, as for Runner Runner, this is a card that uh, allowed for some good burst turns against uh, quite a few decks. This is this is a solid card. If you have extra vigor and agility tokens, uh oftentimes this is this is very this reminded me of Celestial Cataclysm where it's like, "Oh, I made a bunch of vigor tokens for my grains the last turn and I got it going. I got an agility token." All right, this is basically Cataclysm, a one card six go again. Really, really, really solid. It's even better than Cataclysm because it remakes the agility token. So it's a very, very strong card. It needs a little bit of setup, but it is uh it's it's really, really, really strong. It's a popper, it blocks for three, not two. It's it, it's very, very solid. Uh this performed very well over the weekend. Um down here we got three copies of Cleave. This is for the illusionist matchups predominantly. Um you need to very, 
If you're not familiar with how Cleave works, you need to read it very, very carefully and understand how it works, right? Uh, so the, the, the this card's fine against the uh, draw mine. So one of the uh, conceptual differences between uh, the Runaways deck and my deck list was that they were using uh, Dawn Blade plus a different blue base uh, to counteract Dromai, which may be stronger than this. I don't know. Uh, but that's what the conclusion they came to, whereas the conclusion I came to was uh, I thought that, uh, you know, three swings with the hatchets plus cleave was a little bit better. Um, so, yeah. This is a, it's a solid card. Blocks three, gives a plus four buff. Uh, it's quite good with the, with the Decimator Great X as well. Um, this is kind of like the sharpened steel of the Decimator Great X. Um, yeah, pretty great card. All right, over here we got the staples for the uh, Dual Wield Warrior. Um, these are in the sideboard because we don't play them when we uh, play the Decimator Great X. Uh, in the swing, this is what allows you for to get triple hits. This also is a reaction that, uh, as long as you have one in the deck, if the game goes where, into a situation where they're very low, you can just start blocking out, waiting for in the swing um, to end the game. Uh, this plus Blade Flurry are the only attack reactions currently in the deck. I think that will change. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a good card. Spill Blood, this is very, 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 very powerful. It gives Dominate plus two to the Axis until end of turn. So very, very similar to Steel Blade Supremacy in that it lasts for the whole turn. And when you get three hits with Dawn Blade, you get max value out of it. Same thing with Spill of Blood. If you get three hits, this was a one card six. Um, so this is a card that you do need to combine with certain other cards. Namely, you want an agility token, you want a blue, and you need another source of go again. And you would prefer to have an attack reaction to ensure that this hits. Um, this is a very, very, very high priority for armor to be used against because... If any of your first two attacks hit, this is going to result in a one card six on a deck that's already getting ridiculous value. So, yeah. All right. We got the defensive suite down here. We got three copies of Sync Below, three copies of Fate for Scene, and an immovable. Uh, the Sync Belows with Fate for Scenes is just good value. Uh, that's a, the theme of the deck is value. Uh, Sync Below also allows you to smooth out your hands. Fate for Scene actually is also very, very nice because it allows you uh, to put powerful cards down into the pitch stack for the second cycle. Uh, and yeah, these are just solid cards, as as you all well, well know. Um, we got a single copy of a movable here. I think this is a really, really nice tech piece. Um, ever since Pro Tour 3, I've been kind of on one of Unmovable because a single card can swing uh, the Azalea matchup very hard, as well as the Bravo matchup, as well as the Dawnblade Dory matchup. Um, shutting down a single big turn from any of those decks is massive. If Azalea goes really, really hard, generally you could kind of slow her down with these smaller attack reacts and then find some breathing room, set this in the arsenal. If she goes for a big turn and you shut it down really, really efficiently, um, that often is the turning point in the battle. So this one of Unmovable uh, didn't really do much this weekend, but I'm still very, it still has its place in the deck and it has its home right here. Um, okay, so quickly talking about the sideboard, I'm, I'm going to get a ton of questions about this. So let me quickly just explain to you how to sideboard the deck, right? So we got 48 cards in the main board. Generally, if you're playing against... Most decks, you're just going to bring in these, right? In the swing, spill blood, sink blow, fate for scene, your hatchets, and your standard equipment, okay? That's what you normally will do, okay? You can add the CNCs if you want to be a little bit more unpredictable, but you don't have to. Uh, if you're playing against a deck where you need poppers, you would add the CNC and runner runners. Um, and if, if, they're, if you need poppers, then obviously they're illusionist, so you want the cleave as well. Uh, 
like I said, you add the immovable uh, against decks like Bravo, Azalea, Dawnblade, Dory, um, or when you're trying to fatigue people. Uh, so yeah, pretty standard. Uh, if you're playing against Illusionist, I would just side these in. I would not side any of the defensive cards in, right? So you would be playing 63 against the Illusionist. Um, yeah, that's it's it's not it's not very very complicated to sideboard this uh, deck. Okay. Uh, all right, so this is this has been the deck. Um, I will be practicing a little bit and changing a couple things uh, in preparation for the calling in Phuket. So if you are going to go to Phuket, um, you know I I haven't been back to Asia for almost three years now. Uh, so uh, I guess I'll see some some new faces there. So that'll be great. Um, so yeah, if you're going to Phuket, come up and say hi to me. Um, I still got some of these uh, beautiful dory sleeves to give out to people, so um, do say hi. Uh, so yeah, this has been Josh Lab with the card guys. I hope you guys enjoy the deck tech for Hatchet Dorinthia. Uh, all right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Take care.